All right, so let's take a look at continuous random variables. We're going to look at probability density functions. Uh, we'll look at uniform distribution, uh, distribution, exponential distribution. We'll look at uh, the mean and variance also. All right, so let's let's look at some terminology here. So we've got uh, probability density functions. A continuous random variable can take on an infinite number of possible values corresponding to every value in an interval. Uh, a random variable can take on any value in the interval 1 to 2, such as the numbers 1.1, 1 1.01, 1 1 1.2354, and so on. All right, so we're talking about uh, continuous random variables. A random variable can take on any positive number in the interval 1 to infinity. We cannot model continuous random variables the same way we model discrete random variables. Continuous random variables are modeled with a curve f of x called a probability density function. And for, uh, throughout the rest of this, this lesson, we'll refer to the probability density function as the PDF. And, and here's an ex example of a probability density function, okay? A continuous probability density function. Values the random variable can take on are on the x-axis. The probability density function f of x is a function giving the height of the curve at those values of x, okay? It's just like your xy coordinates. Probabilities for a continuous random variable are areas under the curve, okay? So a function with values f of x defined over the set of all real numbers is called a probability density function of the continuous random variable x if and only if the probability that x is between a and b is equal to the integral f of x dx from a to b for any real constants a and b. All right, so we integrate it. That gives us the area under the curve from a to b. So the probability that, so for any number c such that c is between a and b, the probability that x equals c is the probability that x is between c and c. And, you know, when you integrate that, you'll get zero for an answer. So it does not matter whether we include endpoints in the interval from a to b. So symbolically, if x is a continuous random variable and a and b are real constants where a is less than b then all of these all of these right here all of these right here are the same okay it doesn't matter if you put the or equal to under the inequality or not <clears throat> now let us state the following prob properties of probability densities a function can serve as a probability density of a continuous random variable x if its values f of x satisfy the conditions. So f of x has to be positive from negative infinity to positive infinity, and the integral of f of x dx from negative infinity to infinity is equal to 1. All right? So the, these are the two things that we've got to show in order for it to be a probability density function. So let's look at this example here. They want us to prove that the function is a probability density function. So right off the bat, we can see that f of x is positive from negative infinity to positive infinity because this 1 over natural log 2 that's a positive number. And then we have e to a power and e to a power here. That's always positive. So the whole thing's always positive. Now, what we have to show is we have to show that the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of f of x dx, we've got to show that that equals 1. Okay, so we, we got to integrate this. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity. 
Okay, well, let me erase that. I'm going to put the 1 over natural log 2 out here. 0 to infinity of e to the negative x over 1 plus e to the negative x dx. All right, so remember, we can pull the constant outside the integral. Now, one thing that you might be wondering here is what happened to the limits? Because it was from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? All right, well, let, let, let's look at this. Let me rewrite this right here, up here, and, and let me show you something. So that, okay, so we can put this 1 over natural log 2. Uh, well, I'm sorry. So we got to split this up. See, from, from 0 to infinity, our function is this. And otherwise, it's this. So that means everything all for all x values less than 0, our function is 0. So what's actually happening here is we're going from negative infinity to 0. And so from negative infinity to 0, what's our function equal to? It's equal to 0. And then plus, and then we've got to integrate from 0 to infinity the 1 over natural log 2 e to the negative x over 1 plus e to the negative x dx. Well, what happens? This integral here goes to 0, and we're just left with this. And that's why I only wrote this part of it. Okay? All right, so now <clears throat> let's integrate this thing. So I'll go ahead and, and show the work on this one. So, you know, we can see what's going on. So we're going to use u substitution. So I'm going to let u equal 1 plus e to the negative x. So du is negative e to the negative x dx. So I need the negative here, so I put the negative out here, and I can make my substitution. And so if I make my substitution, that's going to be 1 over natural log 2. I'm going to just do my work over here and then write the final answer down here. So I've got the negative out here. And so you see the negative e to the negative x dx. That's this. That's du. And then the 1 plus e to the negative x. That's u. And so this is equal to negative 1 over natural log 2. And this is what? Natural log absolute value of u, and then in the place of u, we'll plug back in the 1 plus e to the negative x. Okay, so that's what we would get if we, if we integrated that. All right, so this is negative 1 over natural log 2, and then that's going to be uh, times natural log of 1 plus of 1 plus e to the negative x. All right. Now, <clears throat> this is where it's going to be a little bit different. I mean, it's the same thing. It's just we're not going into the details that we normally do, like when we did the, when, we, when you do the improper integrals. So typically what we would do here is, is we would have negative, let me do it in a different color, this is how we learned when we when we did the improper integrals. It would be the limit as uh, t goes to infinity of natural log 1 plus 1 plus e to the negative x, and that's from 0 to t. Okay, so you would do that. You would put the limit in there, and you would have to evaluate it like that. Well, what we're going to do now is we should be to the point where we can actually kind of calculate these limits in our head. We're going to write this as going from 0 to infinity. <clears throat> okay? This is how you'll <clears throat> this is how you'll do it when you get into if when you take differential equations and that kind of stuff. 
you won't you won't write the limit down like I just did. So this is going to be negative one over natural log two. Okay. Now do this part in your head. So we've got to take the limit as x goes to infinity for the first part, right? All right, so let's see what we get. So if x goes to infinity, that's e to the negative infinity, right? So remember, e to negative infinity, that's 1 over e positive infinity. Well, this denominator keeps getting larger and larger, so the whole fraction goes to 0. So this would be natural log of 1, because 1 plus 0 is 1. And then minus natural log of, and then we plug the zero in. Well, anything raised to the zero power is, or e to the zero is one. So one plus one is two. And so this gives us negative one over natural log two times, and natural log of one is zero. And then this is negative natural log two multiply those together, those cancel, negative times negative is a positive, and so that gives us one. And so we proved that that function is a probability density function. Now, the, the way I evaluated this right here, if, if you still need to write down, you know, the limit as t goes to infinity, go ahead and do that if it makes it easier for you. Okay, this is just a shorter and quicker way to do it. All right. All right, so let's look at this one. Determine if the function is a probability density function. If it is not a probability density function, rescale it so that it becomes a probability density function. All right, <clears throat> so I've got to integrate this thing from negative infinity to positive infinity, f of x dx. So this is equal to the integral 0 to 10 sine pi over 10 times x dx. All right, so the, and, and this is the same thing that what I did on the other one. Okay, we're going from negative infinity to positive infinity. So, so what did I leave off? Well, I would, see, I just put in the part from 0 to 10 because this part, yes, we would go what? Negative infinity to 0 of 0 dx plus this part right here and then plus 10 to infinity 0 dx because, see, otherwise 0. And see, both of these go to 0, and so we're just left with that part. So that, that's why I just wrote that part. Okay. All right, so so now we've got to we've got to integrate this thing, and you know you should know how to integrate that by now, and so that's going to be what negative ten over pi times cosine of pi over ten times x from zero to ten. All right. It, you know, if you if you want to do all show all your work and everything, you would just what let u equal pi over ten x. Okay. All right. So now, well, let's let's evaluate this. This is negative ten over pi times cosine of pi over ten times ten minus cosine pi over 10 times 0. And so <clears throat> this would give us negative 10 over pi times cosine of pi minus cosine of 0. All right. So this is going to be negative 10 over pi times, and cosine of pi is negative 1 minus cosine of zero, which is one. And so that is going to give us 20 over pi. All right.
So that's what we get. Okay. So that's what we get. So we need one. And what did it tell us to do? If it is not a probability density function, rescale it so that it becomes a probability density function. So that means we would have to multiply our function f of x here by what? Pi over 20. Okay. This is what we would have to rescale it with multiplying by pi over 20 because see we integrated f of x and got this and if we multiply that by pi over 20 that gives us one okay all right so now let's take a look at uniform distribution for the uniform distribution the probability density function f of x is constant over the possible values of x all right so here's an here's an example Okay, the uniform probability density function in figure 2, 3, A is the minimum value X can take on and B is the maximum value X can take on. <clears throat> Where A and B are any finite values, intervals of equal length are equally likely to occur. The uniform distribution is a continuous probability distribution, so the area under the entire curve is equal to 1. The area under the curve for a uniform distribution is simply the area of a rectangle. And so we know the area of a rectangle is base times height. So if we do B minus A, okay, times F of X times the height, this right here is the, the width. So that, e that, ha that equals 1. And so B minus A times F of X equals 1. And then if we divide both sides by B minus A, we get F of X is 1 over B minus A. Okay, so that leads to this. A random variable has a uniform distribution, and it is referred to as a uniform random variable. If and only if its probability density function is given by this. F of X is 1 over B minus A when, a is when X is between A and B, 0 otherwise. All right. So suppose X, suppose X is a random variable that has a uniform distribution with A equals 150 and B equals 200. So they want to know what is F of X. So 150 and 200, that's the maximum value. That's the maximum value that it can take on, 150 and 200. All right, so what is f of x? All right, so we know that a is equal to 150, b is equal to 200. So our function is f of x is equal to, and it's this, okay? It's 1 over 200 minus 150, and that is from 150 to x to 200, and then 0 otherwise. All right. So this, when I simplify it, that just comes out to be 1 over 50. Okay, so that's our, that's our function. Okay. Now, what they want to know is what is the probability that X is greater than 175. Okay, so that is just uh, an area. So let, let's let's look at this one and let's do this one using uh, integrals. So the probability that X is greater than 175, that is equal to what? The integral from 175 to 200, right? Whoop. Of 1 over 50 dx. Okay. So this is going to give me what? 1 over 50x from 175 to 200. 
and that's going to be 1 over 50 times 200 minus 175 and that gives me 0.5 okay now why did I stop at 200 well let, let's let's look at this so here's my uniform distribution so I've got 150 as the smallest value 200 as the largest value and I've got 175 here so what I'm looking for is this area right there see I can't go past 200 I mean I can so you know if I went out to infinity from 175 because it is X greater than 175 so if I did 175 to infinity of 1 over 50 DX well that's what that's 175 to 200 see I'm at this when I'm between a and B and that's 1 over 50 DX plus and then 200 to infinity well what is it otherwise 0 DX and see that term just goes to 0 okay so let's let's look at the next one what is the probability that X is less than 160 all right so that is going to be the integral of what 150 to 160 that's the same thing there there's 150 there's 200 there's 160 I'm looking for this area right here okay now if I integrate back to negative infinity everything from one from negative infinity to 150 that's going to go to zero just like I showed up here in this part all right so that's going to be 1 over 50 dx and that is going to be 1 over 50x from 150 to 160 which is 1 over 50 times 160 minus 150 and that is going to give us 0.2 and there's your answer okay now if you notice you probably see a, a little pattern here okay so we can actually do this quite easy we don't even have to use integrals like we did up here I mean you can keep using integrals but look there's what one six I'm sorry let me draw this a little bigger there's 150 there's 200 and we're looking for what 160 to 180 right we're looking for this area right here well look, look, look what we were doing see for this problem we were going between what 150 and 160 and all we did is subtract the two and put it over the 50 this minus this so really all we have to do here is this probability is just equal to what 180 minus 160 see that and that over what the 200 minus 150 and that gives us uh, let's see that's going to be 0.4 all right so so what if we did it on this one all right so there's the 150 there's the 200 and we're going from 170 to 220 okay so remember this out here that's all just zero so all we're going to really be calculating is this from 170 to 200 so that probability is 200 minus 170 and then over the 200 minus 150 which is just 50 and that is going to give us 0.6 all right now what is the 15th percentile of this distribution okay so let's let's draw this and see what we have okay so we got 150 to 200 
in the 15th percentile. So we're going to come out here to some value P. Whoop. And it's this area here. Okay. This area, the 15th percentile, that's 0.15. All right. So basically what we're doing here is we're looking for the probability that X is between 150 and P. Okay. And we want this area to equal 0.15. So we can set this up as an integral or we can do we can do it like we did up here. So we could actually put what? P minus 150, right? Okay, isn't that isn't that what we did on this one? See? 180 minus 160, 180 minus 160. P, uh, P minus 150 over the 200 minus 150, which is just 50. And that has to equal what? 0.15. And so now we just solve for P. We solve this equation here for P. So P is equal to 50 times 0.15 plus 150. And so we get P is 157.5. And there's your answer. All right, so now the next thing we're going to look at is exponential distribution. So how much time do we need to wait before a given event occurs? If the waiting time is unknown, we can think of it as a random variable that has an exponential distribution. The time x we must wait before an event occurs has an exponential distribution if the probability that the event occurs during a certain time interval is proportional to the length of that time interval. Some probability questions we may answer using an exponential distribution are how much time will elapse before a car exceeds the speeding limit on a particular highway? How long do we need to wait before we are seen at a doctor's office? And then down here, how long will it take before a call center receives its next phone call? All right. All right, so a random variable X has an exponential distribution with parameter theta. And, and so some textbooks may use a different symbol. This We use theta here. And it is referred to as an exponential random variable if and only if its probability density function is given by f of x is equal to 1 over theta e to the negative x over theta for x greater than or equal to 0, 0 otherwise, where theta is positive. All right, so let, let, let's look at... Uh, let's look at an example. It says... The waiting time to buy tickets for a concert is ex exponentially distributed with theta equal 30 minutes. Find the probability that someone has to wait less than 10 minutes. All right. So we've got, in this case, theta is 10. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Where did I get 10 from? Theta is 30. All right. Oh, I was looking at this 10 when I said theta. All right. So we need the probability that X is less than 10. So that's the probability negative infinity to 10, right, of F of X. Well, what's the f of x we're looking for? Now, but before we go, remember, it's this function when it's 0 to infinity. So remember, just like I explained before, from negative, from negative infinity to 0, it's going to be 0, right? So... We'll change this to 0 to 10, okay? Because remember, before this, we would have what? 
that and then add it to this one, which is 1 over 30 e to the negative 1 over 30 x. Okay, all we did, see, for, for theta, we just plugged the 30 in for theta. And so we've got from negative infinity to 0 and then 0 to 10. Well, once again, that integral just goes to 0. So we don't need that. Um, all right, dx. And so now I need to integrate this thing. And I, I'm not going to go through and show all the work. You should be able to do this. I'll just do this part. You'll let u equal negative 1 over 30x. And so du is negative 1 over 30. So you would just have to have a negative and then a negative out here, and then you could integrate it. You can make your u substitution. So when we integrate this, this is just negative e to the negative 1 over 30x from 0 to 10. So that's going to be negative, and that's e to the negative 1 over 30 times 10 minus e to the negative 1 over 30 times 0. And punch that in your calculator, you'd get 0.2835. And there's your answer. Okay. All right, so what about this one? Find the probability that someone has to wait more than 40 minutes. All right. So once again in this problem, theta is still 30. So I'm looking for the probability that x is greater than 40. All right. So that's going to be the integral 40 to infinity of 1 over 30 e to the negative 1 over 30 x dx. Okay. I'm just I'm just using this right here, plugging 30 in for theta, and it's x is positive, and we are positive 40 to infinity. So when I integrate this thing, that's going to be what? Negative 1 over 30 e to the negative 1 over 30 x, and that's from 40 to infinity. All right, now let's look at this. We can do this in our heads now. Hopefully you can see that when we evaluate this, we take the limit as x is going to infinity, that that term goes to zero. Okay, see, see this is going to be e if it's going to negative infinity, that's to the negative infinity, that's 1 over e to the positive, so that means the whole fraction is going to 0. And then that's going to be minus uh, yeah, that'll be minus a negative 1 over 30 e to the negative 1 over 30 times 40. And so punch that in your calculator, you get point. All right, so that's 0.2636, and that would be your answer. All right, so I, I hope all that made sense. All right, so here, here we, have a, we have another problem. It says the average time for certain Canon DSLR camera to focus is exponentially distributed with parameter theta equals 0.5 seconds. Okay, what is the probability the camera will focus after 0.75 seconds? All right, so for this problem, we've got theta is 0.5. And so we want the probability that x is greater than 0.75. That's what we're looking for. So this is going to be the integral, 0.75 to infinity of, let's see, 1 over 0.5 e to the negative 1 over 0.5 times x dx. All right. 
And so when we integrate this, this will give us, let's see, negative e to the negative 1 over 0.5x from 0.75 to infinity. And then once again, this is going to be, okay, so let, let, let me go back real quick. I made a, I made an error. You see this, that's not part of the integral, the one over 30. It should just be that. Okay. Hopefully you caught that, but if you didn't, well, there it is. I fixed it. All right. So we integrate it so that you can see as X goes to infinity here, that term's going to go to zero, just like I explained up, up here. And then that's going to be minus negative e to the negative 1 over 0.5 times 0.75. And that gives us what? 0.2231. Okay. And then find the number of seconds for which we have a 75% chance of the camera focusing after more than C seconds. All right. So that is what? That's the probability that X is greater than C. All right. So this is going to be C to infinity of 1 over 0.5 e to the negative 1 over 0.5 X dx. Okay. So we integrate this. That's going to be negative 1 over 0.5 e to the negative 1 over 0.5 x from c to infinity. Right. So what does that equal? Well, as this goes to an, as x goes to infinity, that's going to go to 0 minus negative 1 over 0.5 e to the negative Oh, shoot. Look at that. I, I did it again. I don't know what's... My brain must not be working too good today. Sorry about that. Oop. All right. And so this is going to give us e to the negative 1 over 0.5c. All right. Now, it says for which we have a 75% chance of the camera focusing. So that means e to the negative c over 0.5 has to equal 0.75. And so hopefully you remember whoop, what is going on. I hit something there. So remember to, to solve this, we what? Take the natural log of both sides. So this is just going to be negative C over 0.5 equals natural log of 0.75. And then when we solve that for C, punch it in your calculator, you get 0.1438. And so that would be that answer. Okay. That's what C would need to be. So uh, after point after point one five seconds, there's a seventy five percent chance that the camera will focus. All right, so let's see what we've got now. All right, so the cumulative distribution function. Recall the fundamental theorem of calculus, which states that if f is continuous on the closed interval a b and f is the indefinite integral of f on a b. Then the integral f of x dx from a to b is f of b minus f of a. And also, if f is defined by f of x equals uh, the integral a to x of f of t dt, f prime of x is f of x. Remember that this right here, that's your fundamental theorem of calculus part one there. So it is in this way that we will describe the cumulative distribution function for any random variable x. 
the cumulative distribution function, which we'll abbreviate CDF, of the random variable x is defined as the function f sub x b is the probability that x is less than or equal to b. So the probability that it's less than or equal to a certain number. If x is a continuous random variable with probability density function f of x, then capital F sub x b is the probability that x is less than or equal to b is equal to the integral f of x dx from negative infinity to b. As the probability density function defines the probability of a random variable to be equivalent to any particular value, the cumulative distribution function describes the probability of a random variable to be within a particular range of values. For continuous random variables, it is more appropriate to consider a range of values. In general, if big F of X is the CDF of a random variable X, it has the following properties. Big F of X is non-decreasing. The limit F of X as X goes to negative infinity is equal to zero. And then the limit F of X as X goes to infinity is equal to one. And then the probability that X is between A and B is F of B minus F of A. All right. So, so let's take a look at this. Let's, let's look at the uniform distribution. So consider the uniform distribution with random variable X and PDF. And there's your uniform distribution. We just got finished working a couple examples with that. The CDF for this distribution is defined as negative infinity to X. See, negative infinity to X. Oh, I'm sorry. Negative infinity to X f of t dt as the integrand is a piecewise function we integrate accordingly all right so so let, let's look at this in some kind of detail so if we look at this hey okay, there's your a and b all right so we're looking we're looking to come up with our function we know we've got f a b of x is equal to 1 over b minus a and that's when x is between a and b and 0 otherwise right so if it's less than a okay if it's less than a then that's what that is that's the integral from negative infinity to x, all right? Now, what you've got to understand here is what? x is over here. And so, and we're going back this way, so that's going to be 0. And so, we, know, we don't even have to integrate that. That's 0, okay? Now, Let's suppose that it's between A and B. So X is over here somewhere. Okay, so let's look at that. So if we integrate that, that's going to be what? Negative infinity to X, right? But we've got to what? We've got to split it up here at A, right? And then go from A to X, all right, and that's 1 over b minus a dt. Remember, this one right here is what? That's just going to go to 0. See, we're actually adding those. This is just going to go to 0 here. All right, and then when we integrate that, that's going to be 1 over b minus a t from what? a to x. And so then if we evaluate this, that's going to be 1 over b minus a. And that's going to be what? x minus a. And that's where this one comes from. All right. Now, this, this next one here, this last one here, so this time x is larger than b. So that means x is out here somewhere. So if we look at that from negative infinity to x, 
All right. So I'm not going to work this one all the way out. I'm just going to put the integrals. That would be what? Negative infinity to A plus, and I'll go ahead and put the DT, plus A to B DT, right? Plus, and then what? B to X DT. Well, hopefully you can see this one goes to zero. This one goes to zero. And then if I integrate this, I would actually have the one over, I'm sorry, B minus A there, right? Well, that from A to B, that's this entire region here. And we know, since this is a uniform distribution, that the area under the entire curve from negative infinity to positive infinity, we know that, that this entire area from A to B is 1. And so that's where they get that 1 from. All right. And then this would be the graph of the cumulative distribution. See, it, for A, everything less than A, that's just going to be 0. And then as we go from A to B, this is going to steadily increase and then once we get here because once remember when x is larger than b that's zero so it's just going to stay at one okay and once you have the cdf for a particular random variable computing the probability of the random variable taking on a range of values is straightforward so let x be a continuous random variable with cdf is this thing. All right, so this is the cumulative distribution here. Okay? All right, so so that that's what we that's what we actually have. We have, let me go back up here. See, we actually have this now. All right. They it's it was already calculated for us, okay? So once you have it, okay, once you have it, finding these are easy, okay? So let's just look at the first one, the probability that X is less than or equal to 1. Well, that's just what? That's F of 1. You just evaluate it, okay? And so that's going to be 1, 4. See, the 1 falls in this interval, so I just plug the 1 in times 1 plus natural log of 4 over 1, and that ends up giving us 0.597, okay? And then this one, the probability that x is between 1 and 3, okay, that's just what? f of 3 minus f of 4. And so now we just plug in the, the 3 I'm sorry, where's the 4 come from? The 1. Okay. We plug in the 3 and the 1. F of 3 minus F of 1. And so that is just what? 3 fourths times 1 plus natural log of 4 thirds minus 1 fourth times 1 plus natural log of 4 over 1. And that ends up giving us 0.369. So since we are given the CDF, we know that to find a probability, we need only plug the values into the function and subtract. Okay. Remember, we're still just finding the area under, under a curve. It's just that in the case of the PDF, the area under the curve represents the probability of an event. All right. So now let's look at mean and variance. So just like all functions, a given distribution will tend to be centered around some value, the mean, and have a certain degree of scatteredness, variance, we can summarize distributions by measuring their center and scatteredness. The mean or expected value of a continuous random variable x with PDF, f of x, is the expected value is just x times f of x dx from negative infinity to infinity if the interval converges, if the integral converges. Remember, you, you, we, we looked at that when we were doing improper integrals. You know, they either converge or diverge. 
This should seem very similar to the definition of the expected value for a discrete random variable. Okay, so once again, consider a uniform random variable x on this interval. So it's just x times f of x. And then they integrate it and they get b plus a over 2. And then from the definition of the mean, we can derive the following results for a random variable x with PD, PDF f of x. So, you know, if you're doing the expected, the e of g of x, that's just g of x times f of x. Or if e of this is, since the a, b, and the c, they're constant terms. So that's a times e of g of x, b times e h of x, and plus c. So the variance of a continuous random variable x with PDF f of x is defined as, okay, and you know, it's, it's this right here. It's that. It's e x squared minus e x squared, okay? So, so just remember that, uh, remember when you had E X, that was, that was what, that was the integral of what X times F of X. Well, E X squared is just the integral X squared times F of X. Okay. That's what they were, that, that's what they're talking about right here. Okay, see it's this times your function. Okay, all right. So let's take a let's look at this. So the 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 standard deviation, which we know from earlier, and I think it was in the last video, that's just the square root of the variance. Okay. So for the unit, and then and they go through for the uniform random variable x on the interval a b. They go ahead and they, they calculate the variance. So there's your formula for the variance. And see, it's just x squared times the function. And then here's your, here's your expected value, which they calculated up here. See, they calculated that here. They're just using that. So they take that and they square it. Okay. So no, know the difference in this and this. This is e of x squared. This is e of x and then squared. Okay, and then they just did the integrals and stuff, plugged it in, and uh, that's the that's the variance. All right. So let's let's work an example. So they want us to find the mean, mu the mean, and sigma for this random variable. So we're looking for the for the mean and the standard deviation. So let's work that out. That, that's why I didn't go in much detail. You you can you can look at this, you know, just go through that, see if you can work it, and then you can check your results there. So for this, we've got the mean, all right, that's negative infinity to infinity of x times f of x dx. All right. I'm looking for the mean, the expected value. So that is going to equal, all right, so just, just pause the video for a second and think about what are my limits going to be, okay? What are my limits going to be here? Well, that's going to be what? 1 to infinity. So hopefully you got that right because, see, 1 to infinity, it's this function, and that's 3 over x to the fourth. And then it's zero otherwise. And so that's x times 3 over x to the fourth dx, which is 1 to infinity of 3 over x cubed dx, which that is going to give us 1 to infinity 3x to the negative 3 dx. All right, so let's see. That is uh, 3 over negative 2 x to the negative 2 from 1 to infinity. 
And so that's going to be negative 3 over 2 times 1 over x squared from 1 to infinity. Now as x goes to infinity, hopefully you can see that term goes to 0. And so that's going to be 0 minus a negative 3 halves of 1 over 1 squared, which is 3 halves. And so there's our mean. Now let's do the variance. So the variance is equal to negative infinity to infinity. All right. Well, let's let, let's do this. Let's write out a little. That is e x squared minus e x, and then all of that squared. All right, so that's going to equal, uh, let's see, negative infinity to infinity, x squared times f of x dx minus, and then the mean squared. Well, in this case, we've already calculated it there, so that's just 3 halves squared. Okay, so what, what I think, what, what I'm going to do here is... I'm just going to come down here, right here, and I'm going to work this 1 to infinity x squared of, let's see, what was it? 3 over x to the fourth times 3 over x to the fourth dx. So I'm just going to work th this one on its own so I don't have to keep carrying all this down. Okay, and hopefully, you know, I hope you understand how these lim why these limits are one to infinity now. Well, this is just what one to infinity three over x squared dx, and then when we integrate that, I'm not going to go through and show all the work like I did here, where I move it up, you know, where I move the negative x to the negative three. I'm not going to move that up x to the negative two. I'm just going to go ahead and write it, that is going to be negative 3 over x, okay? And so, and that is from 1 to infinity, so hopefully you can see that's going to be 0, okay, as x goes to infinity, minus negative 3 over 1, all right? So this is equal to 3. So now let's come back up here. This gets replaced. See, I came down here to calculate it. That gets replaced with 3. So that equals 3 minus 9 fourths, which is 3 fourths. And so that's the variance. So the standard deviation is the square root of 3 fourths, which is square root of 3. Let me write that a little better. Square root of 3 over 2. And there's your variance. All right, so is there anything else? Okay, so discrete and continuous random variables. I'm not going to really read over this. Uh, you, you can you can read over it. it it's basically kind of it's it's com comparing results. Uh, this is your table for discrete random variable. This is continuous random variable. What we did today was the continuous random variable. And you see, with the discrete, we're we're what? See see how they all look similar. It's just on the continuous, what are we doing? We're integrating this stuff. You see that? All right. And, you know, on both of them, probabilities are between 0 and 1 on both of them. Inclusive. So I think that, yeah, that's all of this one. Uh, so, you know, I hope this helped. Uh, check out my other videos and... Give me a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.